<laughs> hey everybody, Mega Mind here for part five of the Grey Knights videos. This time we're talking about. Do you remember? No? Okay, how about From the Edge of Darkness? Here we go. For years, Titan remained absent from the galaxy. While the Emperor was interred in the Golden Throne, and the traitors fled into the Eye of Terror. The Grey Knights chapter grew within the warp as the Loyalist Space Marine Legions hunt down the survivors of the Horus Army during the Scouring. The Grey Knights trained and perfected their physical and psychic skill. Finally, years after the end of the Horus Heresy, as a Loyalist Space Marine Legions were dividing themselves into chapters in accordance with the newly crafted Codex Astartes, Titan returned, just as Malkador had planned. However, time is subjective within the warp, and where years had passed in real space, decades had slipped by in the fortress monastery of the Grey Knights. Eight Space Marines and eight and hundreds, wow, hundreds of thousands of raw recruits had entered the warp. A full 1,000 Grey Knights emerged. In Malkador's stead, Janus had created the formidable weapon dreamed of by the Emperor, and it now stood ready to begin its righteous task. So as you can see, this supports what I was saying in the last part. The Grey Knights are essentially a first funding, founding chapter. So what's next then? Fine, ooh, yeah, here we go. By the time the human lords gathered by the sigillet were masters of the Inquisition, and had long been awaiting the return of Titan. Ah, okay, I see what they're saying. So what they're saying is the four lords of the Inquisition that they uh, uh, did not go with them on Titan. But they do knew they were out there and they were waiting for them to return. With great care and utmost secrecy, the Inquisitor lords added the Grey Knights to the records of the Adeptus Terra as the 600 and 66th chapter. Lost in the anarchy of the second founding, so many and varied were the names and foundings of that time that few noticed an addition of another Space Marine chapter, which is pretty amazing. I, I can't imagine any bureaucracy gets so busy that you can create an entire Space Marine chapter and outfit it and equip it and all the personnel involved and nobody noticed wow it would, it would seem to be what is there just like one little form space marine chapter a list people are just telling never mind okay <laughs> where were they the names and foundings at that time that no one noticed the addition of another space marine chapter the only organization to know the gray knight's true purpose was the inquisition and shortly after the return of titan the lords of the inquisition traveled to the chapter's fortress monastery where they met with the supreme grandmaster janus what transpired between these great lords is recorded in the annals of the chapter. The sacred words of Janus and the Inquisitor lords marked out in ancient ink telling of this first secret pact between the Inquisition and the Grey Knights. So that means that essentially, even though they're recorded as a Space Marine chapter, in reality... The Grey Knights are actually their own office in the administratum, really. They never were. They were never meant to be a Space Marines chapter. They were never designed to do that. They were created by the Emperor as their own self-contained uh, weapon against chaos. So they really are their, their own, I guess, administratum entity you could say. They're not a chapter at all. 
In the first centuries after the creation of the Great Knights, the chapter was called upon many times by the Inquisition. In the wake of the Horus heresy, the Imperium still burned with war and was plagued by demonic incursions. On the twin moons of Urim, silver-armored angels were held responsible for the destruction of the Ithacan demon cruciform. Though none of the local citizens survived, they left behind crude drawings on the walls of their refuge caves, depicting men clad in glowing silver, impaling twisted shapes of burning crimson, all fangs and claws. The great star mirror of Vaus records the coming of the demon hunters. Though none of the ancient astronomers lived to speak of what they saw, in the eeky depths of the mirror, the fate of the Vaus system can be discerned. Every event to touch its worlds reflected, reaching back thousands of years. When the warp worm came to Vos III to feed, a shining vessel appeared from the void. The warriors it disgorged set upon the worm and its servants, cleansing Vos III in a war visible from space. During the hell reign of Coropolis, blind and deaf Ministorum monks witnessed the Grey Knights banish the Cornate Stormlord. Huddled in the dripping cellars of their mountain sanctuary, their minds were tormented by the psychic blood that ran down the world. Such was the glorious presence of the demon hunters that even without eyes or ears, the monks sensed their coming, seeing their deeds as fierce argent flashes in their minds. The Grey Knights fought their secret war wherever the threat of the Dark Gods appeared, seeking out those places where the fabric of reality grew thin and hungry demons turned their gaze to the realm of man. This was to be the sacred duty of the Grey Knights, and their endless struggle against a foe without number or remorse. <laughs> and now, next time, we shall talk about, oh yeah, the Citadel of Titan. Now they're going to focus more on what is actually on Titan instead of the Grey Knights themselves, which is actually an interesting thing in itself. Until then, bye!